Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Sleeping Gods, and hoo oh boy, <laughs> I have a lot to say about this one. It was so tough to fit this into five points, but I'm gonna do my best. Might be longer than five minutes, but uh, if you'll hang in there, you'll hear a lot of thoughts. And disclaimer, this was a review copy, but let's cut right to the chase and get to the list. So first, for my number five, I'm gonna look at the movement in the game and the almanac system. And on the positive side of this one, I love how they use the almanac. It's this little book with these beautiful illustrations of the lands you're exploring, but all of the pages and moving between them makes it feel epic, like you're really exploring this living, breathing world. And I also wanna highlight the fun of the movement and the exploration, because you have these quests that tell you you're looking for a volcano, or you're looking for a rocky outcropping, and you gotta scan the maps and use the little clues and figure out what are they talking about and find it? But that's exactly where the negative side comes in because when the quests are kind of vague and you spend a ton of turns looking at all these different places that look kind of like what they're talking about but aren't exactly what they meant, it can be really frustrating and it can really make the game drag sometimes. And the same sort of thing when you move slowly and you're trying to reach a faraway location, going through a bunch of turns of just movement without any of the other exciting narrative stuff can be a little dull. But I'm going up to a full pro at number four, and that's the combat system, which is pretty rare, but a lot of fun and very tense when it happens. So in a way, combat is almost like a freeform polyomino puzzle in that you have these enemies next to each other with squares corresponding to their abilities and health, and as you do attacks, you fill in those squares with your attack value, and you can go from one enemy to another in splash damage. It's a really fun, tense puzzle because every time you attack, you get attacked back, and anyone you don't kill at the end of the the turn will attack you and you have to carefully use your dwindling resources and your dwindling mitigation and try to keep your crew members alive. It's just a lot of fun and very exciting. The only small negatives I want to throw in, even though this is a pro, is that some characters are better than others. So you'll tend to attack with the same people repeatedly. And also, as cool as combat is, it can sometimes feel like a distraction from the fun story. Like, hey, let's stop and play a mini game for a while. <laughs> so I think that might bother some players. For my number three, I'm going back down to a mix, looking at the replay of ability in the game and specifically the quests. Because these quests, which basically turn into freeform objectives for the players, are really cool, super varied, and a great thing is playing through one full campaign, you're gonna see a very, very small fraction of them. Maybe one out of six or one out of seven you'll have encountered. And that also plays positively into the game's replayability. Especially if you're someone who's a bit obsessive about looking at all the nooks and crannies. If you're like me and you did every quest in Skyrim or the Fallout series, you might really enjoy playing through this one again and again to really discover everything. But at the same time, I think the replay could be a negative for some people. It might even be a negative for me, yet I'm not entirely sure because I haven't played the game through like three or four times. Because the core experience, the combat, and the challenges, they're fun, but they're still kind of the same thing. And the big thing is upgrading your characters. You actually kind of do it three times in the same campaign. You lose all your upgrades, then you can get them back again. And you lose them again, you can get them back again. And I found that a little dull even in my first full campaign. So I think by the time you're playing through like your fourth or fifth campaign, unless you've let a lot of time pass, it might not be that exciting anymore to kind of build up your characters and get items and equipment. But what is consistently exciting, at least for me and very closely tied to the last one, is the actual act of exploring in the game, which is handled through this little choose your own adventure paragraph system. And while this part of the game is nothing new, we've seen it in lots of games before, I think it is very solid. Kind of like Tainted Grail, they use a keyword system tied to your quest cards that kind of reminds you what you've done before or lets you unlock new experiences based on what you've discovered elsewhere. But on top of that part, which definitely positively adds to the feeling of exploration, the writing of the narrative, at least in my opinion, is really good. There's some really great world building, the setting is fleshed out and charming, and while they don't have the time to dig into the core character traits of all nine of your crew members that often, they do sprinkle in little dashes of personality there that for me, at least kept me going and attached to these people. And then we get to my number one. <laughs> 
Who boy am I number one? Uh, I took like every mechanic I wanted to talk about and they're all interrelated and just shoved them into this one point and I don't know if it's going to make any sense but let's have at it. So what I'm looking at here is the core challenge mechanic in the game where you have a target number, you flip a fate card, you add your skills and any mitigating factors and abilities and you see if you succeed or fail. And some positives off the bat. It's a quick system. It's a consistently tense system. It's a predictable system. And they have so many items and abilities and resources to help you overcome something if you really want to, to like make sure you pass that do or die test that I think that's very satisfying. But getting to the negative side of things, and this is where I might kind of go off the rails, but it is related, at least I think so. You have nine crew members to manage, so you control all of them if you're playing solo, or they get divvied up in cooperative play. And each of them has multiple unique abilities to start. You can level them up with more ability cards, and then you get these adventure cards and items that give you mitigation and bonus damage, and you have this very limited amount of command to actually spend on all these abilities, so you have to kind of carefully decide which ones you want to use. And all of that is cool and thought-provoking, don't get me wrong, but it also causes ridiculous table sprawl, especially late in the campaign, when you can have like 50 of these adventure cards and all nine of your crew members, each of them with new weapons and new abilities, and in a weird way, that late-game sprawl can be both overwhelming and limiting, because you have so many things to consider using, but some of are going to be so much better than other things or so obvious for the situation or you have so few of the command cubes that you really just have to use something and it feels kind of forced. So I don't know. I still like the mitigation. I think it's fun. But man, this game can be a bit of a bear to run especially solo when it's all just up to you. So overall, I have to say this. I think Sleeping Gods is in general a triumph of design. I think they really had a great ambition and they did an awesome job with it. And comparing it to Tainted Grail and Seventh Continent to kind of somewhat similar games, I would say that I found this one more consistently satisfying than those. So I can definitely recommend it to gamers who love big narrative experiences, big stories, who like exploration in sort of a video game feeling, like in something like Skyrim, and also anyone who wants the feeling of a big, epic, sprawling campaign that you can finish in just 10 or 15 hours, not like a huge thing like Gloomhaven. But on the other hand, there are definitely some things to consider before you buy this. Are you worried about the sprawling game presence? Do you like to read or listen to tons of narrative reading because if you play co-op, a lot of your time will just be somebody reading the book to you. And also I think any prospective buyer has to ask themselves about the value and the replay. Are you going to play through this two times or three times or four times? Will you actively sell or trade your copy when you're quote unquote finished with it? But for me even if I never play through a full campaign again, I'm happy to have experienced this one. It really was a trip. And if you want to see Colin and or Berndt having their own adventures, click the links that just popped up. Good gaming and I'll see you at the next stop.